What's up guys, in this video, I'm going to be talking about 10 things I wish I knew when I started making beats or producing. So the first one is you need to have passion for it. With anything you're going to do in this life, if you want to take it seriously, you need to have passion for it. If you don't have passion, you're going to you know, quit or you're going to get tired or you just feel frustrated and stop doing it or you just get lazy. Number two is you need to have money. Oh, uh, in this life, have money or you go so far. Money is not everything in this life, but you definitely need money. If you don't have money, there's no way you can buy gear. There's no way you can, you know, advertise your bits. There's no way you can market yourself. You need to have money. I'm sure you'll be asking, where can I find money? Where you go and work. Work, 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 work. If you're old enough, if you're a grown man, you need to work. You can do odd jobs, save up enough money, then, you know, use it and buy your gear. I'll probably make a video on the gear I think you can get as a music producer. The next one is gear is expensive. Like 78,000 million US. Ah, young rich Dubai nigga. Yeah. Tell them. Dubai, yeah. <laughs> yes, gear is expensive. You know, when you add the cost of your laptop, your headphones, your speakers, your MIDI keyboard, you know, your hard drives, your acoustic panels, your... If you're, if you're a YouTuber, you want to do videos, your camera, you know, everything gets expensive. Your preamps, your sound cards, your audio interfaces, all the stuff can be kind of expensive, you know, when starting out. But well, that's one thing I wish I knew because if I knew it was expensive, I probably would not have said, yes, I want to be a music producer, you know. But, you know, it's one of those things that you find in every field of life. It might not pay you when you start off. So you need to, like, also have a side job you're doing, a side hustle, so you can fund yourself. Some people are just out here begging other people for money. You can't be begging people for money. You don't know how they got their money. So you don't know if the person you're begging for money is actually broke, you know? <laughs> so you have to find a way to make money for yourself. If you're still very, very young and you can't work, probably ask your parents if they can help you out. If you're a grown man, if you're a grown woman, go out and work, you know? Stop begging, work. Because when you work and you... Um, buy stuff for yourself, you will notice that you value that stuff more than somebody just giving it to you, you know. You will take care of it more when you work for it and buy it with your own sweat and blood, you know. That's just how I feel about it. The next one is you don't really need to have expensive gear, you know, but depending on your situation because the argument is always, oh, you don't need to buy very, very expensive gear. You don't need to buy this. You don't need to buy that. My own question for you is, the people that buy them, do you think they're fools? Do you think they don't know what they're doing? They can actually hear the difference in quality. But then, as a beginner, or as someone that's a noob, you might not really hear the difference. Or you might not know the difference in all those kind of gear. You might not need it, you know? But you don't really need expensive gear. But you need to have a lot of knowledge in what you need and what you don't need. And depending on the kind of music you make, it just depends on your situation. That's how you know what you need what you don't need. Like if you're a producer that is a musician that knows how to play the guitar, you know, it might be different for you than somebody that's, oh, all he knows how to do is play keyboard. He doesn't know how to play the guitar. He doesn't have a saxophone. He's not a sax kind of person, you know. He might, he might not need to get a sax, you know, but you might need to get a MIDI keyboard. You know? So it depends on your situation too. If you don't mix, if you don't do a lot of mixing, you might not need to buy a lot of outboard gear. You might not need all of that. You know? But if you do mixing and you don't really produce, you know, you might want to focus more on buying a lot of gear, like mixing gear than producing gear, you know. So it depends on your situation too, you know. Speakers can be expensive. Like I said, you might not need the expensive speakers, but if you have expensive speakers, you will hear the difference in your production. So it depends on experience too. Experience is going to play a factor in the kind of things you need. One thing I recommend is save up your money and buy mid to top tier gear than just buying small gear and upgrading, upgrading, upgrading. Because you spend a lot of money upgrading your gear than saving up to buy the gear you need. That's just how I see it. But you know, you can just start off with small gear and always upgrade too. I started with very, very cheap gear. Like, see, see these headphones, Skull Candy headphones I used to use when I started. I used it for a while before I bought my expensive headphones, you know? The next one is people will rip you or steal from you. There's no way you're going to get away from the bad eggs. People are going to show you shaggy. <laughs> People are going to do you wrong, you know. So 
you need to have that in mind that, oh, bad stuff can happen any point in time. People can remake your beats. People can steal your beats. Or they'll tell you, oh, send me these beats, then I'll pay you, and they'll never pay you, or they'll block you. Or they'll, you know, people can just be very, very, very weird. You know, people can be very wicked too. <laughs> so you need to just have them have that in mind that people can steal from you. Yes, there are ways you can protect yourself. I'll probably make another video for that, but I just want you guys to know that. The next one is you might not really make a lot of money. Yes, I know. I know. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine. When you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. Spend a lot of money and not make money back, you know, it can be very, very, very frustrating. So, you know, that's why a lot of people go into depression. They start off a business, you know, they spend all their money, but they don't make money back from it. They they fail their business, their business fails, you know. So with music production too, it's something you need to have that in mind. You might not really make a lot of money back from making beats. You know, there are ways, it's not only making beats that you can make money too, but you know, like you might not really make a lot of money from being a music producer. And even if you are going to make money, it's not going to be like overnight. You not, I mean, everybody's case is different too. Don't don't get me wrong. But if you are being realistic, you can't start producing today and tomorrow you're making one million euro, you're making two million. You know, it's, it's very, 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 very hard, very rare to see stuff like that. It takes time. It takes time. And that leads to my next point. You need to be patient. It doesn't happen overnight, I would say. If you're learning stuff, if you're learning music theory, if you're learning whatever you're doing, if you're learning mixing, if you're learning how to make beats, it takes a long time. Network. You need to network. Like, there's no way you, you keep making your beats 24-7 or you have a, a whole bunch of beats sitting on your hard drive and you don't network yourself or you don't network your beats to people that need them. How, how is anybody going to hear you if you don't network yourself? There are different ways you can network. You know, you can make ads, which I'm going to recommend at first. Two, if you're living in a place, you can always go out and find people that, you know, the artists. If you have friends, you can ask your friends, do you know anybody that's an artist? Send them to me. Or, you know, you go online and look for artists. Go to Instagram, go to Twitter, you know. YouTube, upload your beats to YouTube. Artists might come to you, you know. It takes a long time too, but you still need to network yourself. Like everybody here, you I'm sure you have Instagram. Put what you do on Instagram. How do you want them to know that you make beats if you don't have stuff like that on your page, you know? Show yourself out there. You need to put yourself out there. The next one is you need to know music theory. You might start off and you feel like, oh, I don't need music theory, but along the line, after doing it for a long time, you will need to know music theory because your beats might be sounding whack or your beats might be sounding um very, very amateur because you don't know the basics. You don't need to know all that it is to music theory, but you need to know the basics at least. That's something I wish I knew when I started. You know, when I started making beats, I just use my ear. I just, you know, mess around. Some beats will sound nice. Some beats are like off-key and I'm like, this fire, this fire. <laughs> but then when I started comparing my beats to the beats out there and I'm like, how come my beat sounds like this? Or there's something, like something is always, something just feels wrong, but I just can't place it. Then I started learning music theory and I was like, oh, I see, this is why this sounds like this. This is why that sounds like that. So you need to know music theory. That's one thing I wish I knew when I started. Then the last one is you need to be consistent. Like with everything I've mentioned already, with having money, being patient, networking, knowing music theory, be, having a passion for it, you need to be consistent. Like, there's no way you're going to actually last if you're not consistent. Like, they say you need to put 10,000 hours before you can actually be a master or something. You need to put in that hours. You know, you can watch a, as much tutorials as you want to watch on YouTube. You know, if you don't really put in that work, if you're not consistent, if you're not working, you know, there's no way you're going to be a better music producer, you know. So you need to be really consistent with what you're doing, you know. You need to keep doing it every day. If you're uploading beats, upload beats as much as you can. Try and be consistent. Try and have a schedule, you know. Me as one, I've seen how not being consistent can affect affect you. You know, sometimes I know I'm not so consistent and I've seen the damages it has caused me. It's something I wish I knew when I started producing because a whole lot of factors that will affect you, you know, there's no one way to it. You know, you might, you might start making beats, then you have to work. Then your work is taking more time than 
the time you have to make beats, you know. So there's always different factors, but you know, you can always find time, even if it's just one hour a day or 30 minutes a day. It's it's better than going two two weeks without making a beat or three weeks without making a day. You're always gonna have, you know, a few minutes to just to yourself. You always have a few minutes, 30 minutes at least to yourself a day or like in two days, you're always going to have that time. So just try and be as consistent as you can, you know. I know everybody has different schedules, so be consistent, you know. <laughs> it pays off. Keep doing it. If you're a beginner, if you just started producing, keep producing before you know it. Like you need to make thousands of beats before you actually make a decent beats. M- maybe not a thousand, but you know, <laughs> when you do it for a while, when you make a lot of beats, you would start getting better with everything, you know. So being consistent should actually be number one, but you know it goes hand in hand with having a passion for it. If you don't have a passion for it, you won't be consistent. You know, it's just basics. Yeah, guys, thank you guys for watching. Let me know your thoughts too. If there's any points I missed, let me know in the comments. I want to know what you think.